Hey guys, uh, today I'm gonna show you how I made uh, John Lennon's guitar. So I started by making some thin sheets of clay using the colors that I can see in the wood of the guitar. I used brown, ochre and beige for this one. I use a pasta machine to make the clay sheets, but you can also use a rolling pin. Make as many sheets as you think you will need to get the right color. Put the sheets together and fold them several times. When they get too small to keep on folding, you can cut it and place them side by side, then pull it to make it long again. And then keep on folding. When you cut, you will see the wood grain effect showing inside. Keep on folding until the wood looks like the reference that you are seeking. Once you like the color inside, slice the clay in thick layers and place them side by side. Cut off the parts you don't like and blend them together by pressing the rolling pin over it. This will give you a perfect wood-looking sheet of clay. Print the guitar with the size you want and cut to the body shape. This guitar has F hole, so cut it out as well to make a perfect stencil for the front of the guitar. Place your stencil over the clay and cut it. Take your time here and try to get as perfect as you can. Remove the stencil. Cut another body without the F holes for the back of the guitar and bake them. Once they're baked, sand the edges and paint inside the F holes. I used my amazing and vegan Simply Simon brush and black Genesis to paint, but acrylic paint works too. Now I paint the area that will show inside the F holes with brown paint to make it a bit darker and give it some depth. After it's all painted, I add liquid clay between the two parts. Place the front over the back and blend the two parts together by adding the same wood color clay to make the side of the guitar. Make sure that everything is nice and smooth. You can use some baby oil or isopropyl alcohol to smoothen it out. Bake the body. Now let's make the neck. Cut the printed image to make your stencil. Place the stencil on a popsicle stick and trace it. Gently cut the neck shape. It's a bit challenge, so take your time. Sand the edges. Mark the side of the neck that will be over the body and trim that area to get a perfect fit. Gently break the head, but not all the way, just enough to bend it. Sand the front so the broken part won't show. Now let's add clay to the back and this will make the neck and head stronger and give it the proper rounded shape. Once it's shaped, bake it. Now place the neck sketch to your neck and mark all the frets and fret markers. Trace and carve the frets a bit, it doesn't need to be too much. Use your sketch to mark the string posts as well. Trace them and drill through it. The neck of this guitar is dark, so to paint the neck I'm using acrylic brown paint. I thin the paint out a lot by dissolving with water and this will make it dark but you can still see the wood. For the head I used a dissolved black acrylic paint. Once the neck is dried, cut some thin jewelry wire and glue them to the carved spots. These will make very realistic frets. Also glue some thicker wire inside the holes to make the string posts. Add some glue to the back to make it stronger. Once the glue is dried, cut the wires to fit the neck size. Paint the sides of the neck white. When the neck is ready and dry, glue it to the body with bacon bond or liquid clay and bake it. If you rather, you can just glue it with super glue as well. Place your sketch over the body and mark all the details. You can poke a hole to mark. Be careful to be very precise. Now open some gray clay and use the same holes to mark the pickups and cut them. Add some liquid clay to the body and place the pickups on their spots. Roll some clay as thin as the part that you're going to do Slice them in circles and place them into the right spot. I made two small circles to lift the bridge. For the jack socket, I made a hole in the middle 
and one for each volume and tones, and for the switch, I place a thin wire inside. Mark the bridge using the same holes on your sketch, cut it, and smoothen the edges. For a very realistic pickups, let's cut just the center of it as well, because this part is a bit higher than the tips. For this one, I'm using a very thin layer of clay. Then place it to our pickups with some liquid clay to glue them better. To finish the pickups, I'm going to add six silver micro beads in the center and one on each tip. I will also add the micro beads to one side of the bridge, and on the other side, where the strings will go through, I added some tiny pieces of clay and mark the center of each one. This will keep the string in the right place. It's very small and challenging to make them, but it's worth to get it perfect. Now let's add some liquid clay to the circles we prepared before and place the bridge over there. Be careful to place it in the right position. Always keep an eye on your references. We're almost ready to bake. Let's just add some clay to where the neck meets the body to give it a perfect shape. And if you're also as perfectionist like me, add an extra layer to each volume and tone, but really, you don't have to. We could barely see it on the final product. Now we can bake it. Once it's baked and cools off, we can paint the silver and gold details according to our guitar pictures. Just follow the colors. For the strings, I used a gray sewing thread and paint them silver as well, just to make it stronger. I made three strings, each of them with twice the length of the guitar. For the tailpiece, I folded a wire following the shape on the reference as close as I could. Then I cut a beer can following the reference size, and with a rounded tool, I bent it, leaving a space on the top, and glue it with super glue. Now we just need to fit the wire inside that space and glue this piece to the guitar body also using super glue. Now I poke eight holes to the beer can, also following my reference. It's easier to poke the holes if you have a soft surface behind. I cut the shape of it and measure it to make sure I got it perfect. Fit the first string on the second hole from the top to the bottom and go back to the top from the third hole. Do the same with the two other strings, filling the six center holes. Now fit the first and the last hole with the wire. Measure the distance and glue it to the wire. Once it's dry, cut the excessive wire. To finish the tailpiece, I'm just adding some epoxy clay so it's stronger and gets the right thickness as well. We also need to paint it silver and the tailpiece is ready. Now let's make the tuners. I'm also using epoxy clay for those. Cut 12 pieces, shape them following the size and the shape in your reference. Press a small piece of wire between two of the shapes, blend them together and fix the shape. While your tuners are drying, we can make the nut. Cut a thin strip of epoxy clay, glue it to the end of the neck and mark six indents to hold the strings. For the inlays, I cut some aluminum foil and glued them to the neck. Now. Let's glue our tuners with super glue to the back of the head, and if you want to go crazy, paint the name and symbol. Let's also paint the nut and the back of the neck with acrylic paint. Add polymer clay gloss all over the guitar, and now let's finish the strings. One by one, make sure to set the string in the indents that we made to the bridge and nut. Wrap it around the wire and glue it with super glue. Paint the tuners and our guitar is finally ready. It was a hard work, but I love it. And I think it's perfect for my miniature John Lennon to play. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.